In this video, we're going to look at mitral regurgitation. This is an overview and introduction. Mitral regurgitation is where there is leakage of blood backward through the mitral valve each time the left ventricle contracts. Patients are often gravely ill with significant hemodynamic instability. This is acute mitral regurg and requires urgent medical treatment. All the valves of the heart can be heard most prominently in certain areas across our thorax. The aortic valve is best heard in the right second intercostal space parasternal. The pulmonary valve best heard on the second intercostal space on the left parasternal. The tricuspid valve left fourth intercostal space parasternal and the mitral valve left fifth intercostal space mid clavicular. Looking at a normal heart, we can see it has four valves. The pulmonary valve is made up of three leaflets, the tricuspid valve three leaflets, and the aortic three leaflets as well. The mitral valve has two leaflets. Out of all the valves, the mitral is normally the only valve with two leaflets, and that is why it is called a bicuspid valve. During the cardiac cycle, the mitral valve and tricuspid valve open together. This is to allow the ventricles to fill with blood prior to systole. Here is a normal mitral valve open and closed. In mitral regurgitation, the mitral valve is not strong, and this is due to a number of reasons. Because of this, the mitral valve does not open and close properly. During diastole, the heart with mitral regurgitation is able to fill the ventricles with blood. During systole, however, the mitral valve cannot close properly, and as a result, blood is also ejected back to the left atria where it should not go. This results in some complications. In mitral regurgitation, blood can travel back towards the pulmonary system, resulting in pulmonary edema. We have increased in pulmonary vascular pressure, which can lead to congestive heart failure and core pulmonale. Another common complication with mitral regurgitation is the development of atrial fibrillation. Mitral regurgitation can be acute or chronic. Acute mitral regurgitation tends to be more aggressive because of the sudden onset. Some signs and symptoms of acute mitral regurgitation includes fatigue, diaphoresis, palpitation, dyspnea on exertion, and low extremity edema. Chronic mitral regurgitation may be asymptomatic until it becomes bad. On cardiovascular examination, patients with mitral regurgitation, we listen to the left fifth intercostal space midclavicular. This area is also known as the apex, where the apex of the heart is located. We normally can hear two heart sounds. S1 and S2. S1 correlates with your atrioventricular valves closing, which are your tricuspid and your mitral valves closing. And S2 is when your aortic and pulmonary valves close. We have a first heart sound, S1, and a second heart sound, S2. Drawing these sounds out, we can divide it into three things. S1 is when your atrioventricular valves are closing and blood is in the ventricles. The ventricles begin to contract. Between S1 and S2, your ventricles contract so hard that it pushes blood through the aortic and pulmonary valves. S2, your aortic valve closes and pulmonary valve closes, allowing the ventricles to fill back with blood from the atria. Thus, we can say that between S1 and S2 is systole, when the ventricles are contracting, and from S2 to S1 is diastole, when the ventricles are relaxed and filling with blood. In mitral regurgitation, the murmurs are heard during systole, when the ventricles are contracting to push blood out of the heart. 
But because the mitral valve is not closed properly, when it is supposed to, we hear a murmur from when the ventricles are contracting, and it goes throughout the whole of systole. This murmur for mitral regurgitation is a flat, continuous murmur in systole, also called a pan or hollow systolic murmur. It is also important to know that the murmur radiates to the left axilla. Another finding is diminished S1 heart sounds, which represents the closing of the mitral valve. Recapping, the mitral regurgitation murmur begins at S1 and goes all the way till S2 when the aortic valve closes. The murmur is flat and continuous throughout systole. Investigations that can be performed include an ECG, which may show signs of atrial fibrillation. AF, atrial fibrillation, is characterized by absent P waves with irregularly irregular rhythm pattern. The gold standard for assessing and identifying valvular heart disease is by using ultrasound, echocardiograms. The etiology of mitral regurgitations include most common mitral valve prolapse, rheumatic heart disease, which is caused by group A streptococcus leading to rheumatic fever and then rheumatic heart disease. The fever results in the generation of antibodies, which due to molecular mimicry also attach to the heart valves. Endocarditis can cause mitral regurgitation. Mitral valve calcification with age can also cause mitral regurgitation. Here I am drawing the chordae tendinae and papillary muscles, which are structures that play a role in closing and opening the valves of the heart. When you have a myocardial infarction, this can result in chordae uh, tendinae or papillary muscle dysfunction or rupture, which can lead to a mitral regurgitation because these structures are not working properly. The final cause of mitral regurgitation to note is cardiomyopathy, which includes dilated or hypertrophic cardiomyopathies. The management of mitral regurgitation includes diuretic preoperatively to reduce peripheral edema and lung edema prior to surgery. Surgery includes a valve repair or replacement. Surgeons can perform valvuloplasty, where a catheter is introduced from the femoral vein up and through the foramen between the atria, where the balloon will help dilate the mitral valve. Annuloplasty can be performed, which is essentially when you insert an annuloplastic ring around the mitral valve to support the mitral valve. Now back to the valve replacement and repair. The damaged mitral valve can be replaced with a mechanical or bioprosthetic valve. There are weaknesses and strengths between the two valves. Mechanical valves are often used for the younger people because it lasts longer. Finally, a intra-aortic balloon counterpulsation procedure can also be performed which promotes more blood flow through the aorta rather than back to the left atria where it should not go. This is only a temporary solution.